Hey guys, welcome back to my Nicaro Custom Guitars and welcome to another episode of the CNC Guitar Build Season 2 where this year I'm going to build a 7-stringer multi-scale headless guitar Now, if you followed me on social media, Facebook or Instagram by the way, links down below you notice that the production of the guitar has started well, actually, manufacturing the, the neck Every build that I do, I always like to start manufacturing the neck first. So when I'm at the point of milling the neck pocket, I can always use the actual neck to test fit the right dimension. Now, this is one of my neck blanks. I do apologize for this. This was kind of a silly error from my part but back to the neck so this is one of my neck blanks it's a five piece laminated neck I love building with laminated neck it's, it adds so much strength into the neck and regarding dimensions well it's quite long for every build and I think it's over a meter and it's 20 millimeter thick Fairly standard thickness for a neck blank. Now, in hindsight, if I want, if I may add something, I would have done the neck blank much thicker. Since in this build, I'm going to extend the neck heel underneath the neck pickup. And if I'm going to remove 18 mil from the pocket and, and the neck blank will be right underneath the pickup it means that it's going to be just two mil but since i'm going with bernacles the slanted humbucker from bernacles is just 13 mil um, thick so with that humbuckers i can easily leave eight mil of material from the neck it, it will be more clear in the future when, when I'm going to explain or as in a few minutes when I'm going to show you the model. The next step is to mount the neck blank into, onto the CNC. Now to do so, what I like to do is to have four locating pins. Now the purpose of these locating pins is of course to locate the neck blank exactly on the CNC bed but the most important is when I'm going to mill on the other side of the neck blank the center line of the, of the neck blank it will be the same as the top and the bottom and that's why the locating pins are so important so basically what I do this is the neck blank which I because the neck is, all, is almost ready so what I like to do, I like to glue up these four pieces of wood. These are just normal pine. And here you can see there are four holes in which the pins are located on the CNC bed. And like this, I can mount it like that and then flip it, locate the pins, and I will still have the center line where I, where I, where I want it. And this time, since I have a longer blank I screw down the remaining length of the neck blank into the CNC bed so you don't need to use the clamps if you remember well if some of you remember well last time I had a little accident was fun okay now let's go to fusion and I'll show you the first couple of tool pads okay guys back to my PC and here on fusion you can see the neck model now this is the part that I was referring to earlier this is the extension that it will go underneath the neck pickup and if I turn on these models here, as you can see, here I have two millimeter uh, distance between the 
uh, top of the neck and the top of the body and in this configuration uh, in the neck pocket I have 10 millimeters of uh, depth now again uh, the bare knuckle humbuckers have a depth of 13 mil the slanted ones and being 13 mil the humbucker will be at this point and I have plenty of room for adjustment if they need it now, let's turn off this and get back to the neck model now first off is the truss rod channel channel of the truss rod which by the way I'm using a 480 millimeter truss rod is 6.1 wide um, funny enough if I have a channel of 6 millimeter and I'm using a 6 millimeter router bit for some reason uh, fusion doesn't let me machine the pocket but if I do the channel at 6.1 I can easily go around it now on the trustless channel I have three operations and what I did I just uh, post process the whole setup so I'll have just one operation since they have the same tool which is a six millimeter uh, router bit instead of having three individual tool pads the first one is clearing out the pocket and this little access for the truss rod the second one is removing further material from the middle because since I'm using a contour it will leave especially here to leave excess material and the final pass is a contour that exceeds this pocket Now, after that, it's time to install the truss rod. Put some masking tape along the length of the truss rod. Put some glue and clamp down the fretboard blank. Now, with the fretboard dried, it's time to flip the neck blank and start machining the back of the neck. So, first up that I like to do is to do the holes for the threaded insert. Now, I like to do it at this point because I have full material around this area and if I'm going to install the threaded insert there is a slight risk especially in this part that the threaded insert will split the wood but installing them at this point it evades that risk here I'm using a six millimeter router bit and the holes are 8 mm diameters and 15 mm deep where the threaded insert that I use you can find them easily on eBay and they are metric 6 and 
13 millimeters long. After that, it's time to go for the logo. Now, the logo pocket consists of mostly two operations. One here I'm using a 0.8 millimeter bit, which removes most of the material. I don't like to risk it. In fact, I go just 0.25 millimeter every time. I go two millimeter deep in this case. And the final pass is a rest machine pass using a 0.5 millimeter bit. And this just remove the material left from the previous uh, pass. After that, it's time to cut the inlay material. First, I clamp down the inlay material, in this case, on just the neck blank. Here, I'm using the uh, masking tape and super glue trick, which works very well. And for the logo, what I like to do is to machine the logo in a negative uh, way. What I mean is that the logo will be upside down. The first two tool pads basically i'm cutting down the inlay material whether the rest of these tool pads is just clearing material around the uh, around the inlay as i said before i machine this uh, inlay in a negative way so that i just pick up from the remaining material of the thickness and just insert it in the pocket in a reversed way. This will be much easier for handling instead of cutting a positive inlay from the same depth. Basically, it minimizes the risk of the inlay to break. So when I'm cutting the inlay, the first operation is I'm using a 0.8 millimeter cutter, a 0.25 depth of cut, and the other contour is a rest machining with, a, with the 0.5 millimeter removing the rest of the material from the previous uh, contour. Now, a little note, when I'm doing inlay work on my CNC, I like to cut the pocket at the exact dimension, but when I come to do the actual inlay, uh, I like to cut it 0.05 or even 0.06 millimeter uh, smaller. And this will help a lot when it comes to install the inlay in the pocket.
Now, for the final passes for today, we're back at the back of the neck and we're going to cut the contour of the neck. I have two operations, both two contour operations. The first one, I'm just removing the most of the material. It's a roughing operation. I'm using a 3 8 uh, upcut spectra bit which works flawlessly and I'm removing around 2.5 millimeter every time and here I'm leaving tabs so that uh, the neck will still be in place with the cutting of the profile the second one it's a finish operation I'm cutting at the exact dimension and this time I'm using a downcut spectra bit I found that a downcut leaves a much more, a much nicer finish at the end. And here I'm using a 3mm cut every time and still leaving the same tabs as before. Okay guys, so that's it for today. I hope you liked it, enjoyed it and learned something from it. If you have any questions, please drop them down in the comment section down below. In the next episode, I'm going to talk to you about the back profile of the neck. This one is going to be a little particular and most probably going to finish up the milling from the back of the neck. Now, I want to take this opportunity to thank my viewers and to all my subscribers if you're enjoying this series and you're not yet subscribed to my channel i please invite you to consider subscribing to my channel and hit that notification bell so you'll be aware about my future releases i do guitar cnc related content and of course to the new subscribers and to the old ones take care and goodbye